This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Lawrence Akoli. Lawrence, how are you? Is that is that worn off yet? No, it's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually hilarious. But yeah, no, I'm good. Thank you for asking. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You've just finished training. Um, obviously, you've now got your fight confirmed. It's obviously been rumoured for a while, but how good does it feel to have a, a date in the diary fighting your mandatory contender, Dylan Prestovich? Yes, good. You know, although you train hard uh, consistently, when it's announced, it adds a little extra percentage, you know, because it's public knowledge and it's unlikely that it's going to change except for, you know, big circumstances. So I feel good, yeah. I feel happy. What's the situation in the gym? Obviously, you've just finished just now. I know Shane's obviously in America with Daniel Dubois at the moment. I think Josh Pritchard's going out to join them. Are you kind of just working on your own for a couple of days or someone else there to, to help you out? No, I'm just um, bouncing around. You know, obviously, I've got like someone like Don Charles who allows me to come to the gym, come up to train with um, AJ. And um, he's got here as well. I think it's good to get in and not, not necessarily like spar or anything like that but just to be in the same you know gym and energy um so it's been good how long have you spent with uh aj and don oh just be the rest of the week really um because obviously shane only left on tuesday so i managed to get in two sessions then sparred uh, on wednesday so now it's you know um thursday friday you know probably spar on saturday and then you know have a day off and then they go back to work on monday so it's not really been a big like Endurance or anything like that. How has it been sharing that time with AJ? Because obviously he's in camp, he's got a huge fight on the same show and you, you guys are close anyway, so it must be nice to kind of reconnect and, and work together. Yeah, it's good. You know, obviously um, it's it's good for him, good for me. Obviously I'm a world champion now, um, so it's good to have another, you know, unified champion or another champion in the gym, you know, you know, competing, of course, like not against each other like that, but, you know, who's going to, you know, punch more during the shadow box and who's going to, you know, um, hit harder or whatever, you know, just whatever. So it's good to have that kind of energy um, in the gym, you know I mean? I always try to bring that good vibe anywhere that I go. So, it's, you know, this is what it is. The last time we spoke to you, you told us basically the game plan for how you feel AJ should beat uh, Usyk. Uh, a video that's still doing really well, actually, on Seconds Out. It's, it's shown a long life, which is good for us and for you. Um just to, have you told AJ the plan that you believe as well? Is that something you've discussed, strategy, and, and him for your fight as well? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I'm not his coach, so he's going to have his own sort of, you know, game plan. It might be similar to the one that I said, but we, we chop up, discuss, you know, like um, tactics. Obviously, he's got his sparring partners here. Um, some of them I've sparred already because I was boxing the South for um, in the last camp. So, um, yeah, it's good. It's good. Obviously, we talk tactics. He's obviously told me some of his, I thought, oh, that's quite interesting and whatever else. So, you know, tactics aside, you know what I mean? It's all about what happens on that. So I feel good. I like how he's looking. Um, I like how he's looking a lot, you know? Yeah. Tell us about Dylan Prasovic. He's the, the next man up coming to win. You're in a different situation now in that your big night, you've won the title, incredibly impressive performance, but now you're the one with the target on your back. Does that change things at all? Um, yeah, if I'm honest, it does. You know, it's like obviously I've still, you know, challenge your mindset and whatever else, but ultimately now it's someone's coming to steal or take something that's mine as opposed to me being the thief in the night. So <laughs> it's different. Um, it is different, but obviously I feel really confident. Uh, I feel really good. I'm excited to, you know, put on a good display in front of everyone, but I'm just more interested in, you know, blocking and slipping and getting out of the way of shots and landing shots, you know, and then, you know, testing my boxing ability. You know, he's an undefeated fighter. I seems very confident, um, you know, but I just I just expect, you know, to put on a statement because, you know, I, I do have my eyes set on unifications and that's not me overlooking, but there's no way I can unify if I'm not champion. So, you know, on September 25th, I'm going to make sure that my hand gets raised, um, make sure I put on a good statement because... Also, if you want to unify, you better look like the champion. You know, uh, when I boxed my last fight, I believe I looked like a champion and I became champion. So I need to maintain that same thing. Nothing scrappy, no, no points, decisions. Go in there and, you know, do what I'm meant to do. And then we can, you know, start our um, onslaught, you know, because I'm, I'm like, I keep talking about unifications, but you're not allowed it. You have to 
you know, box your mandatory. I don't, you know, all of this other stuff I didn't really realise until I got into this position. So I want to have that challenger mindset by boxing another champion. You know, I want what he's got now. Same way he want what I got. But anyway, like I said, September 25th, I'll go in there, do what I'm meant to do, and then we go to work. It's a huge event um, at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, probably the biggest, well, no, undoubtedly the biggest in the UK since the pandemic. Are you still in a position where those sort of huge events excite you? Yeah, of course, they're going to excite me, but not, not over-excite me. Um, it's just standard, you know what I mean? I'm going to obviously understand the benefits of putting on a good performance on a night like that. You know, I put on a good performance in December on the last AJ show, December 2020, got a good knockout. Um, then obviously headline my own show and um, behind closed doors. Hmm. So it'll be interesting to box in front of, you know, a big crowd again um, and all that. But ultimately, it's, 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 I don't know that it over excites me. I'll, I'll, I'll be excited when I've watched the replays and my ring walk and all that other stuff after the fight. But beforehand, you know, as I said, just blocking, dodging, landing. And your mind's set very much on unifications, as you've mentioned. Have there been any kind of talks behind the scenes? Is there a particular champion that seems more likely to get in the ring with you soon? I think the easiest one would be a Makabu, um, just because I don't think he has a fight lined up. I heard Bradis is even moving up or he's got a fight against uh, Cizlak, as well as Egorov versus um, Gilmarian. Um, so the belts are quite tied up by the looks of it outside of Makabu. However, if I'm able to put on a good performance in the next four weeks and no fight is made between, like, let's say, Bradis and the Cizlak, I would like to push to make the Bradis fight. Um, only because I feel like He's right number one. Um, he's top 10 pound for pound on certain lists and stuff like that. So I thought like I want to beat him while he's the guy. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, the other ones, I could beat Makabu, you know, still, you know, a hard fight. Obviously, he's a champion. But when I beat him, am I number one? It's still debatable. Do you know what I mean? So I need to go in and I would like to beat the, the top guy. But we'll see how, how life plans out. And what about longer term? I know you're a guy who always sets goals for yourself. After, if you unify the entire division, what would be next then? Would you look at moving up in weight? Would you see there to be anything more to achieve at cruise weight? No, I feel like if I'm able to do what I hope, which is win all the belts at cruise weight, I'll probably go down as the best cruise weight out of Britain, which is important to me. Do you know what I mean? Um, even unifying would put me in that probably, in my opinion anyway, um, up there with one of the best champions out of Britain at uh, Cruiserweight. So unifying, wow, you know, I have to go down as one of the best and then, uh, if not the best. And then, obviously, you've got someone like David Hay who made the transition to win the heavyweight world title as well. So it is, um, yeah, it's amazing, really, come to think of it. So I'd like to, I'd like to just take it one step at a time, but, you know, we'll, we'll see... You mentioned David Hay there. It'd be remiss of me not to ask what you make of his comeback against Joe Fournier on September the 11th. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to watch it. Do you know what I mean? It's David Hay is someone that I, you know, admired um, coming up. He's probably one of the old, like, only three boxes I've got pictures of when I on my wall when I first started boxing, you know. Um, so he's someone that, you know, I rate. And even just as, like, a marketing genius and, like, you know, to achieve so much, not just in the ring, out the ring, being a good manager, I'm making millions of pounds and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I look forward to it. Great stuff. Lawrence, really appreciate your time, especially after a hard training session. Okay. Very best of luck. Um, Thank you. September, and we'll see you again soon. See you again.